Okay, video, we need to get this unit with this dongle here. And one end here connects into the box down here, like this. So put it on. And the other end connects into the USB port here. So make sure they're both plugged in. And when the computer goes on, this light will go on, and this light will go on. This is the key for the lock system. The system turn on, and the laptop is held underneath. Okay, we'll also find a box of keyboards. Code number for the lock screen is written on the piece of paper with these. Okay. The system should just turn on itself. Once you've turned on the mains here, it will turn on itself and you'll see GarPoint Pro will come up. If this screen doesn't come up or it says password exceeded, it's because you haven't plugged this in correctly. As you see, this grows when this cable is connected to the USB and the other cable is connected in to here. Okay, and this cable is held in the corner there. Okay. So you put that password in here. The screen opens up. Often it asks if you want to back up, you just say yes. It backs up all the data. And this screen here shows all the accesses and entries since the last time things backed up. So normal access, so just this, it's all connected. Normal accesses are in green. And if somebody's been denied entry because the gym is open perhaps between 7 and 10 o'clock at night, so if somebody who's not a director has come in before 7 or after 10, then the pass will come here with a black line against it. So load someone new into the database, you go up here to card holders, click on it, card holder screen appears, and here you go for new, and you enter their details. Okay, so I've entered all the details, including their mobile phone number. Okay. In the access group in this corner here, we have two choices. You can either be a director, or so we have four choices. You have director, garage only, pool and garage, or pool only. If it's a normal user, you select pool and garage. That gives them 24 access, 24 hour access to the garage, and access to the gym here between seven and ten o'clock. You can also select pool only, garage only, or directors. Directors gives people 24 access to all the facilities. You save. Top here. To select a fob, you look into the badge thing, and if they already have a badge, it will appear here. Otherwise, what you're going to do is push the create new button, and a second screen pops up and it says get from card. So this screen then pops up and we need to get a card from the bio reader. So you take it, come from the box, you walk outside, and you swipe on the reader. Okay, short bleep means it's accepted the card, it understands that it's a valid card. And on the screen, it will now show a card which will enter the main door on the time. So you go, okay. So that now is the card. This card is now looking to the system as the badge. And you move the code to used. So yeah. So what that's just done is it's logged this card that you swiped at the door, it's logged it here to this code. And you save it. Okay. And then to check, 
Take the card again. The outside. Listen to a different bleep. It's a long bleep, which is a valid bleep. And that means the card is working. And then we can close this box. And you'll see that the access has been granted to the Gardener 2 from the reader main door. That's a person set up on the system. If you want to remove a user, you select the user you want to remove from the drop down menu here. And before you do anything, you need to make sure that their fob is deactivated. So in this case, I've clicked, clicked the fob and looked at their fob status and I've made sure their fob status is cancelled. Okay. So if they have a cancelled fob status, I can then close this window. And with a cancelled fob status, I can then delete the individual user by pushing delete. You don't want to delete the user unless you've cancelled the fob. The user's deleted. Just to go through it one more time, I have a user that I've set up. I click on save. All their details have been entered, including their phone number and there is a director. I then want to allocate them a badge, so I move to the badge area. I go to create new. Badge screen pops up. Okay, these are called Wigan. Uh, Wigan fobs. Okay, so I want to get the details of this fob selected here. You can actually look on the fob cap and you'll see the number is actually typed in there. Yes. So you could type the number in, so it's 842. The easiest thing to do is to get it from card. Card reader screen pops up. You then go to one of the readers. You have a short bleep. So it's highlighted the card. Okay, doesn't know the card's allocated to, but there's a card at the main door. So you go, okay. Happy with that card. You move the status of that card from free to used. Save. Saves it to the user we had previously. Here's the card, 842, as this card says. So this card is triple O triple O five three eight four two. Okay. Save. That's the save. And don't forget if you want to change the card status, you select the user again from the drop down that you want. You can then edit the card badge status. You can move them to a different status, so for example, cancelled, lost, stolen, save. If it's cancelled, you need to, when you look at the card here, you need to remove the user and re-enter them later. And when you're finished, close the button, close it down, make sure you're saved. I like to check the cards, make sure the cards both work. So final card. Card that works should have a long beep. Okay. You check on the system screen and it shows access granted, Gardner, main door here, and it's got the time and date. And when you're happy, shut down the application. Click the application, yes and then you shut down the computer. And stop, shut down, stop the computer. That's it.